Well, Mikhail, coming up to a year in the job now, how have you found it? Very exciting, really enjoying it, and uh, very challenging as well, because um, I think I've been here 11 months, but the reality is that we've been four or five months sitting at home with this COVID world and, and everything that has been surrounding um, this pandemic. You mentioned about when you came in, you had all these ideas and the things that you wanted to implement as a, as a head coach. How difficult have you found it to get those ideas over the line? Some more than others. Um, some, they were um, pretty quickly. Some were related to certain attitudes, uh, behaviors, and, and things that I expect them um, as a group of how we live together and the standards that we had to set in. Um, Playing wise, um, a lot of principles and how they apply them um, I'm extremely satisfied of how things are developing. For example, looking at the game that we played against Leeds a year ago and who we are as a team today, I think it's a, it's a big evolution. But in other things, uh, there are a lot of things that, um, that we still need to improve. And that process takes time. And I have experienced that uh, before as a coach in, in another club. And, um, and then there are many other things, that the people that you have around you at the football club, the decisions, how they are taken, um, the squad that you need and the specificity that you, you need uh, within the squad to implement what you want. And um, and then the enjoyment and, and winning trophies. And um, we got two and we won more and we won the big ones and, and that's where we are heading. This is Ollie Watkins! Aston Villa, they've torn through Arsenal here. In your post-match interview, you said that you took a lot of responsibility for that. So in the time that you've had, in the break that you've had, what lessons do you think you've had personally from that defeat? Well, that I cannot allow the team of uh, lacking belief till the final whistle is gone. And I saw a team that when we considered the second wall, that, um, that they didn't have that belief that we could get back in the game. And then we lost our shape, um, our structure. And uh, we weren't the team that uh, we have been. All the negative things that had happened, happened for a reason. And it's how you take them, how you move forward, and what you learn from them so it did not happen again. Is inconsistency a problem for Arsenal? Absolutely. That's the reason why the last few years, um, Arsenal finished 30, 45 points behind the, the top team. If you don't have that and consistency, you don't finish there. So that's a big gap to change in a very short period of time. And that's a, a massive challenge because there are a lot of things that have to be changed to close that gap. It's not one or two. There are many, many ingredients there. And this road is going to be bumpy. And with the competition we have in this league, is going to happen. If everybody think or thought that that was going to be a trend like this, is completely wrong. There's been an emphasis around Arsenal recently on a lack of creativity and perhaps also um, questions put to you about whether or not we might see Aubameyang being used more centrally. What is your response to that? Well, that it's a collective thing. That creativity is a collective thing. It's how you progress the ball into the final set and then what happens into that, which is the most difficult thing in football. Because there are less spaces, more opponent, and the decision has to be quicker and more precise. The lack of goals, when you play with four almost strikers, um, it has to be a collective thing. And we cannot just put responsibility on Oba that is not scoring uh, as he used to, or somebody else. And, and again, me first, to try to produce more situation. And then when we produce them, yeah, it's being clinical. Is there still a way for Mesut Ozil back into this team, perhaps in January, when you can reshuffle your side? Do you feel like his career at Arsenal is, is over? I don't know. To predict what's going to happen in two or three months in football is impossible. I cannot predict what's going to happen tomorrow or on Sunday. So I'm very focused on, on the present, what we can do now, and I will see what happens in January. There's been a, a, a lot of comment around the, the five subs being reintroduced back into the Premier League. Some managers have been more vocal than others, saying that they want to see it. Where do you stand? Would you like to see that happen? I'm all for it. I think we can uh, create some room and flexibility on our players um, with the load that we are demanding. Um, I think we have to do it. Um, there is no precedent in any league uh, in history where players have to play the amount of games in this calendar year. So we can provide some 
time that they can rest or get changed or get subbed. And not only that as well, I would extend the numbers in the squad um, right now, tomorrow, because that means that you have other players that are involved training every day. They, they go from training home, home training, involved in, in what we do. So even for them mentally, uh, it would be a big change. And I think there are easy things to do. And we have experienced it before. So it worked. So why not do it if we can?